Jigsaw crew, get out your notebooks. We're going to biology class and this one's gonna be a doozy. We're gonna talk about the adrenals and the true difference between adrenal fatigue and adrenal insufficiency and how you can start taking back control of your energy levels. Well, the thing is, we have to understand, first of all, what adrenal fatigue is before we can go into detail. It's basically defined as this debilitating fatigue, right? It's the effect of so much stimulation, so much caffeine, so much stress, where adrenals essentially aren't able to produce enough cortisol, norepinephrine, DHEA, a couple other things. But then we have to factor in that the medical community doesn't recognize adrenal fatigue, but they recognize something called adrenal insufficiency. See, we have to respect what the medical community looks at. They look at adrenal insufficiency as the inability to produce these specific catecholamines and to produce these specific hormones. Without being able to produce those, they call that adrenal insufficiency. They don't recognize adrenal fatigue because it's such an ambiguous, broad statement. And I don't blame them. That's a pretty broad diagnosis to just give. But I think as lay people, we can sit here and we can truly understand whether or not we have the early signs of adrenal insufficiency or just a broad adrenal fatigue. Let me explain how the adrenals actually work. And let me explain some of the structure of them. And I'll explain the different hormones, the different catecholamines, the different effects it has. So the adrenals are basically a three and a half by one and a half inch gland that sits on top of your kidneys. They're mainly responsible for producing cortisol, norepinephrine, and DHEA. But there's three different layers within the adrenals. And I'm gonna break them down here real quick. The first layer is called the capsule. That's just a fatty layer, an adipose layer that protects the adrenals. The second layer is called the cortex. And that's sort of the big fleshy area of the adrenal that makes up about 80% of it. There's three different zones within this cortex. There's the zona reticularis, there's the zona glomerulosa, and there's the zona fasciculata. Now it's a mouthful, but it's really not that important to know the terms. Then we have the center portion, which is known as the medulla. The medulla is the epicenter that produces most of the catecholamines, like the epinephrine, the norepinephrine, the dopamine, and the adrenaline, the things that really get us going. But let's talk about that meaty portion for a second, that cortex, because that has a big role too. The main role of that cortex and the different zones within it is to produce things like androsterone, to produce things like DHEA, to produce things like aldosterone and mineral corticoids. What are all these things? Well, I'll break them down here real, real quick so I don't waste a lot of time. Okay, DHEA and androsterone and stuff like that, that is the hormone that helps you create testosterone. It helps other hormones in your body. It helps sex hormones. Believe it or not, the adrenals do play a role with your sex hormones. Then we have things like cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone directly, right? It comes up when we are stressed and it helps us reduce inflammation and balance out from stress quite a bit more. Then we have things like aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineral corticoid, which you may have heard before, but basically what it does is it regulates fluid balance and minerals in your body. Believe it or not, the adrenals do affect your fluid retention. Have you ever noticed that when you're really stressed out, you hold more water? Well, that's simply because you have mineral corticoid bloat and your aldosterone levels are totally skewed, so your potassium, your sodium levels are totally out of whack. Your kidneys, therefore, don't know how to regulate how much water you hold and how much water you excrete. Starting to put it together now, so there's one sign of adrenal fatigue is excess bloat all the time. Now that we have a basic understanding of what the adrenals are and the different things that they do, let's talk about why stress affects them, okay? What is happening in your life that's making these things burn out? Let's start with caffeine. If you're constantly taking in caffeine, you constantly have this bombardment of norepinephrine, epinephrine, and adrenaline. It's a simple process. That's the feeling that we get. That's the high. That's the love of caffeine. But when you start causing this constant creation of that, then your adrenals are going to get fatigued. They're going to get a little bit tired of having to produce that, and they don't always have the time to recirculate and get things going. But then there's other factors. And when we factor in there's three different layers of the adrenals to begin with, there's three different angles in which we can affect it. So then we have stress, chronic stress, where our cortisol levels are elevated all the time. Now remember, cortisol is good, it does help us reduce inflammation, it does get our blood pressure up when we need it, but if it's chronically elevated all the time, your poor cortex portion of your adrenals having to pump it out constantly, and therefore it's gonna get tired, it's gonna get exhausted, and you're gonna have all these other side effects that occur from cortisol being elevated, like high blood pressure all the time, high blood sugar, simply because your body's trying to get energy to where it needs to go. You can see, definitely a bad circle of events, definitely a bad chain reaction. 
Then DHEA, dehydroepiandrosterone, the one that all the guys think is only a precursor to testosterone. Well, it plays a big part in our circadian rhythm too. It also plays a big part in our overall energy and our vitality, and it helps us cope with stress. It's kind of funny, and I mean this with complete utmost respect to men and women, but mainly the reason that men that have high levels of testosterone get moody isn't because of the testosterone, it's because of the elevated estrogen levels. Testosterone is actually naturally pretty calming, even though it does trigger some aggressive tendencies. So DHEA is a precursor to testosterone that can actually help a male calm down and deal with a situation a lot better. So contrary to popular belief, that's really more so how it goes. But let's talk about what you can start doing and how you can really tell if you have adrenal fatigue. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're someone that's fatigued all the time, then obviously you may have it, but there's a lot of people out there that are tired. But there's a couple telltale things. One is you're tired in the morning and you end up having most of your energy towards the end of the day. This has to do with the effect of cortisol. Cortisol, when acting normally, and when our adrenals are acting normally, will be produced at its utmost level in the morning to help you wake up, help get your day going. A good, healthy person has energy in the morning and starts to wean off by the end of the day. But there's a lot of people out there that have to supplement with caffeine so they don't really know how they truly feel in the morning, and then they find that their natural energy is higher in the evening. They start becoming night owls. They do more work at night because their adrenals are burnt out and it's taking a long time to ramp up. So that one is number two. But then number three is like the inability to fight infections, constantly feeling sick, constantly feeling run down. You know your body, you know your immune system. And the thing is, cortisol plays a big role in your immune system. So if your cortisol is not operating right and it's not able to regulate your immune system, you can become very immunosuppressed, which means you're much more susceptible to acquire an illness or to not fight an infection. So those three signs, general fatigue or very, very extreme fatigue, but also gaining more energy throughout the end of the day, then of course the inability to fight infections, and lastly, like I mentioned before, the inability to regulate water very well, constant fluctuations in bloat, fluctuations in water retention. So what can you do? Here's three simple tips, really quick. First off, make sure you're getting enough of the Himalayan pink salt that you need, okay? Himalayan pink salt is going to help balance out your body. It's got 20 or 21 of the important minerals that you really need to regulate that aldosterone, those mineral corticoids. It's gonna help that process out. Then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're getting rid of the sugar. Believe it or not, sugar is so inflammatory, it's causing cortisol to elevate a lot of the time to try to bring the inflammation down. It may not seem like much and it may seem far-fetched, but when your body's having to constantly combat inflammation and combat the negative effects of sugar, then you're definitely putting yourself in a bad situation. The next step is taking DHEA, believe it or not. DHEA, even though it's something that the adrenals already produce, is something that's gonna help you feel a little bit more mellow. It's gonna help you balance out with stress, it's gonna help your energy, it's gonna help your vitality, but it's actually gonna take some of the stress off the adrenals so it doesn't have to produce quite as much of it for a short amount of time. And the third thing that you can do is take care of your DHEA levels, and you might be asking how you do that comes down to, again, minerals, particularly magnesium. Magnesium helps support the synthesization of DHEA to begin with. Like I've mentioned in many other videos, it's involved in so many enzymatic processes in the body, magnesium in particular, that it really, really helps form these things that are gonna take stress off of the adrenals. All right, Jigsaw, I am exhausted after filming that one. So I'm gonna go get me some Electrolyte Supreme and get back to action. See you soon.